Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And if you're new here, we just started a cross-country road trip to Baja, Mexico in our 2001 F-250 and 2006 North Star truck camper with a budget of $4,000. And we're currently on leg two here in Arkansas. So we actually found a lakefront spot on Lake Wichita and it's only $24 a night. We just kind of wanted to show this place um, because if you're traveling across the country and trying to save money, this is a really good option because a lot of RV sites are either closed in the winter or they are 50 or $100. And this is this place. Lakefront, picnic table, big spots, nobody else is around. We had room to set up our exercise station. You can see our jump ropes and our water bag weight. So this specific place is Tompkins Bend Campground and it is almost as far west as you can go on Lake Wichita. So you do have to drive pretty far ways past the lake, but it is $24 for full electrical and water hookups. And there's even a dump station. There's three different loops to choose from with approximately 80 spots and there's heated bathrooms and showers. If you're a fisherman, this lake is also full of striper. There's a lot of lakes in the U.S. that claim to be the number one striper, striped bass fisheries. And this is another one that claims that. But, but when we were in Guam, we were looking up places in the U.S. that you could uh, spearfish. And it was funny that I didn't realize until we got here that this is one of the lakes that they hold a spearfishing tournament for, for striped bass. And so that would be a really fun thing we would love to come back here to do when it's a little bit warmer. It's currently January, but when it's a little bit warmer, we'd like to come back here and try to spearfish a striped bass in this lake. That'd be really cool, too. We didn't know this, but spearfishing in freshwater is pretty limited in the U.S. There's only a few states that allow it. And you'd think some place like Florida, which is just renowned for fishing in general, you can't spearfish anything in freshwater there. Also, fun fact, there are freshwater jellyfish in this lake, which is kind of interesting. Because there's a lack of people here at the moment, this morning going to the bathroom sounded like one of those like meditation soundscapes with the birds chattering and the chipmunks and everything, but it was so, so quiet. And Mona has places to run everywhere because there is a huge trail system along this lake on this side. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, it is shower time, so let's check these out. The one thing that Chris and I are super impressed with and in love with is that it is 40 degrees currently outside and these bathrooms are heated. I take obnoxiously hot showers and a lot of the time it's just because the surrounding air in the bathroom is so cold, but it is heated in here. I would say it's ballpark probably 70, but it feels so good compared to the 40 degrees that it is outside. The warmed bathroom with hot showers might be worth all $24. <laughs> I feel bougie. All right, now for the men's shower, which pretty much should be the same as the Women's shower. Oh, I don't like vlogging when there's already people in here. Um, we're kind of in a hurry. Um, excuse me. Um, I just need to film this shower real quick. You mind, uh, you know, just kind of filming this real quick for me? Yeah, thanks, bro. Um, all right, so basically, this is your hot shower. Uh, very nice in here. It's warm, heated. Um, Anything else I can do for you? Uh, weird request, but uh, you know, us campers are very friendly. All right, sir, there you go. All right, so that guy was super friendly. We are on a tight budget with the $4,000 to make it to Baja and back. But for $24, we had electricity 24-7, water hookup, heated showers, and bathrooms on a lakefront spot with no one else around. Um, we did also have to edit and upload a video, and the Starlink is running pretty fast, about 50 megabytes per second, and it still took about eight hours to upload. So if we would have had to run that off the generator, plus we were running like low heat, 
on our AC unit the whole time. We would have gone through several tanks of gas for the generator just for the video upload and for keeping the inside of our truck camper warm. So it really like worked out to be cost beneficial overall. Plus it was just nice to stay in one spot for a couple days to hammer out editing a few of the videos. But I think we are going to start packing up and head to our next spot in Oklahoma. We are packed up and ready to go, but the most important thing and the thing that's been bugging me because I'm a little outdoorsy tree nerd is uh, Chris and I have seen these things everywhere on the ground here and I have googled and googled and googled and I cannot find out what this belongs to. I mean, it's a fairly decent sized seed pod, um, so let's break it open and see what's inside. Maybe that'll help like narrow down what this could possibly be. Kind of hollow like a maraca. Okay, so this looks similar to like um, a gourd or like a pumpkin to me. So it's a hollow shell. And then these are all the seeds with like sort of like a fibrous wet husk in the middle. I assume this had a husk on the outside, but I literally, I, I don't know what this is. Gourds don't have like hard pods like this. I'm just glad it wasn't a baby bird. <laughs> or a platypus. I was thinking because they have freshwater jellyfish here. <laughs> Maybe it's an introduced platypus. Yeah, and, and they're, the, inter the jellyfish here from the Yangtze River in China. So I thought, well, maybe there's an introduced platypus and we just did CPR to break open a platypus shell. Are you just trying to flex that you know that platypus lay eggs and they're only one of two mammals that lay eggs? That's true. What's the other one? Uh, not an echidna. It is. Or an echidna. Yeah. I know it. <laughs> only two mammals that lay eggs, the monotremes and the echidna and platypus. This is not a platypus egg or an echidna egg because it's filled with plants. So. This is a vat and we don't know what that is. <laughs> if you know what that is, uh, please let us know. It looks like a, a gourd, but I don't know what tree would produce that. Anyway, all right, moving on. I have to let this go, put it in the past. Now we're going to hop in the truck and head to Oklahoma. Come on, Mona, let's go for a ride. Girl. Liquid dambar sty styracaflua genus and species for sweet gum, sweet gum ball. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're a little confused. Uh, you know, you get conflicting reports sometimes. We're in Oklahoma. And the place that we drove to all day long is supposed to be a free camp spot that we read online. But then we get here, we see some signs, have some conflicting information, which is like another reason why, like, sometimes it's so frustrating trying to get people into the outdoors because uh, as former game wardens, hunting, fishing, camping rules can be really tricky. Uh, they can be really confusing, even for people who are avid sportsmen. And if you try to go from state to state to state or country to country, you don't know all these rules and regulations things can get really confusing so right now it uh we're getting ready to fire up the generator we got our starlink sitting over there because we have no cell phone service um and we're going to fire it up and see if we have to buy some sort of pass which already we've run into the hurdle of like what pass do we need exactly because there's a lot of conflicting information online so get ready to fire the generator up and sit here and do some online work and see if we're here legally or not so like a pro Quiet, at least the generator is quiet, which is super nice. So let's see what Starlink says. Okay, so we are officially on the Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation website, creating an account to buy a license. So the sign coming in that we briefly glanced said something about you need a fishing or hunting passport to stay here. I've never heard of that. They don't have that in North Carolina. And then online, um, 
it says that that passport doesn't grant you fishing or hunting privileges, but we want to fish. So then we're not sure if you just buy a fishing license, does that also cover needing the passport or do you need the passport and the fishing license? So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to buy a fishing license and hope that that covers it because the passport, I guess, is for using like a wildlife area without hunting or fishing in that area. So I assume it's just for like tax purposes and money going towards hunting and fishing conservation stuff. But if you just buy one or the other, they still, you know, gather that money. Because they're at the same price, right? Yeah. So one day fishing license. We got our Starlink hooked up. We're 90% sure that we have our fishing situation settled and that we are legal right now. So of course, you know what we're going to do. We have some discount grocery store expired noodles. And we're going to throw a couple of, uh, we're going to throw a boiled egg into each one to church it up a little bit. Add a little pizzazz to this. I'm going to glop these in. Glop. And to set the stage and the ambiance here, we actually went to an Asian grocery store and we bought these chopsticks like you get at a takeout restaurant, Chinese restaurant. We love these because there's no plastic in them. There's no, uh, you can burn this or whatever you want to with the waste and nothing to wash. So we're going to have this amazing looking schlop for dinner and see you guys tomorrow. Stop playing with it, you weirdo. I'm sorry, are we not accessing that shredded beef on, on the... Oh, I forgot about this. We have a packet of shredded beef there we go. of Brazil, Ooh. which is well known for their beef. It does kind of look like the tuna. Instagram versus reality. <gasps> a little different color there. Mm. If you guys are hungry at home, go ahead and smash that like button. So a lot of these we bought uh, unknowingly were all like spicy or spicy kimchi. I just... She gets to enjoy this hot slop and I enjoy this big beautiful hot slop. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just a spicy weenie. That was my nickname in college. <laughs> I've been experimenting with uh, humor to drain energy, which reminds me, does anyone here have any up dog? We woke up to, uh, I guess, a severe weather alert. I guess a lot of Oklahoma and Texas right now is under a winter weather advisory and we're supposed to get snow and it's been raining for several hours. So I guess we're still going to try to catch a trout while we're here, but we're not sure if we're going to head west or south or stay here another night. It's still up in the air. Yep, so we're going to try to at least catch one fish before we get out of here. Uh, so we're going to go check out the water real quick and then figure out what our plan is going to be after that. Maybe like seventh cast, eighth cast, something yeah, like that. Like we, got a nice little rainbow. we saw so many last night. We just got here so late. It was dark, but. All right. On our little single hook spinner. That's a nice fish. That's a good size rainbow. That's a pretty fish. Fins are a little beat up. So we got kind of a thing here where if we've been not having a lot of good luck fishing i'll throw the first one back almost like as a as a as a tax or a penance on myself um, <laughs> so threw that fish back hopefully we can catch a little bit bigger one because we'd love to do a catch and cook our other issue is, is we don't have any rain gear or a good way to dry stuff out in our camper so we're trying not to get soaked to the bone out here but we're hopefully can catch at least one more fish so chris just spotted some coyote scat on this trail we heard coyotes all last night, about every couple hours, you'd hear them howling and crying as a pack far off in the distance, but apparently not that far because there's coyote poop right on the trail around our camper. We were also super excited for this Baja trip because Asheville has just been nonstop rain and mud for the past few months. And so we were like, yeah, Baja, it's gonna be dry. 
And I feel like this rain and mud and potential snow is going to follow us all the way to Baja, and possibly into northern Baja, because they've had random storms and snow warnings the past week before we even left. All right, so in Candy Adventures fashion, um, that is not the first time on this channel where <laughs> I threw back a first fish anticipating a second fish because things were going so good and a uh, second fish just never came. The uh, rain cloud seems to be following us from Asheville. We kind of hit it in Arkansas and then the day that we left it was sunny and nice and then we got here late last night in Oklahoma to wake up to more rain and it's supposed to be rain all day today and uh we'd rather just leave at this point than stay and just sit around in the rain we'll just keep heading west because our ultimate goal is baja it is nice to have these little stops where we can fish or it's just a pretty view but these are just short stops to get to our ultimate goal of baja so we're going to finish crossing this river and hopefully climb back out of here before the water starts rising too much and maybe go see some snow in Amarillo or somewhere. Yeah. Well, we woke up in pouring rain and it has turned into snow. We made it to Western Oklahoma in this empty camping spot that is free, has pit vault toilets and we have beer and we're ready to hunker down. We've never camped in the snow before. Our truck camper isn't really rated for snow, but it'll be fine. We have a diesel heater and we are loving the silence and emptiness that snow brings aside from the cacophony of cow sounds that are happening in the distance it is quiet we still have about six hours left on our oklahoma fishing license so i'm out here trying to make it happen in an unknown lake with a bent rooster tail and a collapsible eagle claw rod <laughs> i don't foresee any victories here but A little chilly and we have seemingly uh, brought the dark cloud of precipitation across the United States with us on our way to Baja. We've been trying to get out of the mud and into the warm and dry um, and it has followed rain and snow with us the whole way. So we're going to hop in here and pop the top and get our heater on which uh, we splurged for a 20, uh, $14 a night place that has electricity tonight. So let's get the heater on. So we splurged tonight because our camper is not a four season camper. So it's a little drafty and our diesel heater is loud and it burns up our battery and we don't listen to the generator all night even though it's quiet so our electric heater will plug right along nice and quiet and we can edit our videos hook up our starlink and not be running on our generator all night uh kind of kind of an admin catch up and it's a beautiful place so why not so our camper is a grower not a shower especially on cold days like this so all you do is you yank this cable out and then we shove it into the one. You can't do it wrong because uh, the si uh, shape of the plugs only allow for one thing. So even though I used to jam um, those pesky little square pegs into those silly little round holes in kindergarten, which I had to do twice, um, I, can, I can still do this plug. <laughs> Another reason why we are hooking up is because it's supposed to get to 19 degrees tonight. So in addition to not wanting to run the heater on a generator, none of our camper is insulated, so none of the water lines are insulated. So when it drops to 19, you're risking any of the lines or uh, tanks like bursting because they're gonna freeze. So there's another reason, but $14 isn't that bad. And this one has heated showers too. She spotted the deer. <laughs> She really likes to chase things. She's a true predator.
All right, so we just invented a new food, a Marmite <gasps> egg cheddar cheese um, panini uh, with an expired wrap cut in half. You put Marmite on this? Yep. I got Marmite from the expired food store because I've always wanted to try it. And I tried it for the first time on a saltine with some butter. And I have found it is like the epitome of what I crave all the time is like a salty savory like umami sort of taste i i envision it's what people crave like that have a sweet tooth but me it's like whatever marmite is some savory deliciousness i'm kind of excited so we got here late we're trying to do some editing and we're taking advantage of that 14 we're taking advantage of that 14 dollar a night power and hot showers and because we have electricity we're using our teeny tiny little um griddle, griddle thing we got it for christmas yeah we got it for christmas and we have absolutely worn this thing out and we love to use electricity and not our propane when we get to stay somewhere like this that has electricity this is the bomb diggity oh hi oh good morning we got a break in the weather uh it stopped snowing not that we wanted it to stop snowing um but it is nice that it's warmed up a little bit so we're gonna take a break from editing Peek boo. Peek boo. <laughs> For a minute and enjoy beautiful Santa Rosa, New Mexico. It is a desert landscape with a uh, giant lake reservoir. And this campsite is only 14 bucks, but it is really nice. Um, we saw mule deer and there's a bunch of wildlife and cactus around. So it just looks nice to explore. Also, um, like every desert hike in this kind of territory, I get to worry about mountain lions the whole time that we're here. <laughs> um, but I am very excited because I spent the morning watching um, Billy the Kid documentaries and Young Guns is one of my favorite movies. And one of the first things I ever learned how to play on guitar was Wanted Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi, which was used in the movie Young Guns. Um, so I am very excited. Um, not a lot of cowboy history on the East Coast. So very excited to be out here and uh, we're gonna go take a walk around and see Santa Rosa Lake. That delightfully asmr matic sound is the ice around this lake here in New Mexico. And it is making Mona freak out because it sounds like little critters all over the place. And really, it's just the beautiful and relaxing sounds of frozen Lake Santa Rosa here in New Mexico. This is a pretty cool little cave. Um, of course, I have an irrational fear of three things, heights, sharks, and mountain lions. I know mountain lions don't live in caves, but in my head they do. <laughs> and a cave over a desert oasis like this seems pretty mountain liony to me. New Mexico has like, I think 2,500 resident breeding population of mountain lions um, and what kind of cues that up also for me to feed into my irrational thought process process is right behind me dun, dun, dun. so if i was a mountain lion in the area um this is probably where my pile of bones from a deer would be i got my cave i got my oasis and i've had my feed isn't it said that if you see a mountain lion, like they've already spotted you first. Usually, yeah, people say that. And people who deer hunt their whole lives, like in Idaho and parts of uh, parts of California and really known mountain lion places, they've never seen a mountain lion. But it's always said that, well, you've probably been seen by a mountain lion a bunch. Yeah, and you have no idea. That is um, fresher than the other well, one. All right, that doesn't look 10 years old like the last one. <laughs> all right, it's a little bit chilly. And it's starting to get cold because it's a little windy here in the in the desert. I think we're going to get back to the camper and warm up a little bit and uh, finish editing the video so we can get back on the road. But first, I think I'm going to work out real quick. But I want to show you something real quick that I'm very proud of that I spent no money on. It was completely free and it really fits in with our um, $4,000 budget on traveling across the country. So we looked at like getting gym memberships, Anytime Fitness and all those kind of places. Most of them have a lot of rules and uh they don't uh, like my unconventional workout style and a lot of those places also are not really close to the interstate so what i did is i built some t some trx style bands and what this is is we spent no money on this this is some 
PVC pipe that was just laying around that I cut into two pieces to make handles. And then these straps come from uh, where my dad works. The, some items come shipped in uh, weekly and they come in these like disposable uh, cam and buckle st type straps. So we have a lot of these things laying around. And so I just find something uh, and it doesn't even have to be level. It can be a tree branch or anything like that because these are all adjustable so you can make the handles level. And then you have chin up bars that you can take with you anywhere and do all of your fantastic at home workouts. And you don't have to spend like $300 on a TRX system. And then to supplement that, we just use jump ropes. So we have weighted jump ropes. It's awesome for blowing up your shoulders. And then we have our speed ropes. It's awesome for blowing up cardio. And the other cool thing about getting somewhere and it has a picnic table is that a picnic table becomes your plyometric box. So we do our plyo jumps and then we can also do uh, for those deep glutes because, you know, we like to uh, have those thick butts as you can do your one legged stuff uh, on your picnic table. So that's our outdoor workout setup for here. Now let's go inside and get some miso soup. And go inside. You want to think about it for like five minutes before you jump in? Yeah, we so, gotta really prepare. You ready? Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Let's get in there. Let's think about it. Oh, you did such a good job. <laughs> Chris and I love Japanese food. He lived all around Southeast Asia for a bit, and I just love it because I love anything that is food related. But these miso soup packets, it's more conventional than the paste because we don't have to keep it refrigerated and it tastes delicious and it's nice and warm, but you don't feel like you have to go to the bathroom like you have to do with coffee. It's nice, warm, comfy, umami, savory deliciousness. All right, we're gonna enjoy our miso, miso broth. Enjoy the electric warmth in here inside the camper for a little bit, finish and editing, editing the last video. Yeah. And I think the next time we'll see you guys will probably be on the border of uh, probably California and Mexico. Mexico, yeah. So hope you enjoyed uh, the last few days of camping. It's been a roller coaster of weather, <laughs> but we're uh, wrapping it up with some good for your soul miso. Yep, but we're super excited to be, uh, be in Baja pretty soon, get a 20, 30, 40 degree temperature bump. And I'm really excited to catch a fish in the shores of Baja. Yes, it will hopefully be um, better than our last shore fishing attempt which was in Portsmouth. <laughs> I won't come back from Mexico until we catch a fish and that's a promise. You know that's a promise. <laughs> so we might be there forever, it's fine. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>